besides that? I'm not sure. It's the size you say it is. It is not 1.2500. Smaller? The light's not on. Let's see. It looks like about a foul less. Mm -hmm. It's 2.4, not 2.5. Focusing, yeah, it's a little off. A little off. Yeah, a little undersized. Yep, looks like they're right there on the money. About a tenth of taper in the crank pins. Yeah. Closer than normal for them. Okay, so we know what size that is. I just took off the, uh, that's not balanced right. Let's see if it's all over. So I got to measure the rollers over here that keep falling out. Think these are standard? Uh, slightly oversized? No. Undersized. They're undersized? Yeah, they always are these days. Yeah, they're like three. We'll call them three. See? Hmm. See the veneer? Three? Yeah. Let's look through the camera and see it though. I don't think it's too bright. Too bright? Oh, turn, turn it off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Quite it's just not focusing. Um, right there. The light, it's not, oh, unless it's your blurry ass lens because it's, it's dirty. Blurry ass lens, it did it. I don't know. I think you need some light on the subject. Where's the light at? It's right there. Oh, there it is. Three, see? Ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> That's why I don't make great cameramen. Oh well. And this one's three also. I'm just measuring one from each. No, that was two out of the same one. Oh, okay. Those are two to fill out. This is a long one. Yeah, this one's yeah, more like two. Yeah. Of a tight two, we'll call it three. <laughs> a tight two, we'll call it three. So two tenths under. Crank pin's one thou under. That's ten tenths under. Clearance is uh, nine tenths to twelve tenths, depending on how much you drive it. How hard are you gonna ride this thing? Pretty hard. Pretty hard. Some of you use a little bit more than nine tenths. Do we go up to twelve tenths or just eleven? Or would it be conservative and just go with it up 10? Besides that, that's a zero on a number. 1.625. Let me go over here. You're blocking my view, sir. I have been told that comments. The mouth confuses people. Yeah, definitely does, especially when you throw it at me really quick. You notice how it's cold? It takes a while for the needle to move. <laughs> okay, here we go. The needle's starting to repeat now. What's it at? A little above. It shrunk. Zero. It shrunk that much because of the hot temperatures in here. <laughs> See how it repeats? Yeah, there it is. See how slow that is? <laughs> oh, wow. 
see it repeats there. It's cold. Okay, so this is 1.625, and uh, what's the other number? Zero. Zero. And this has uh, 50 million so accuracy, so that's 0. 000 0. 0.000005. Oh, shit. No, I think it's too many zeros in there. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. There's only four zeros in front of the five. That had a really big close game to extra zero. Every time you have another zero in there, the accuracy gets ten times better. All right, so what do we got now? Check those. What are we up to? What number do we want? 1.25, zero. Mm. Minus. That would be a little. What would I give you for clearance? Um, a thou, right? Or that was nine. You got a thou from the rod, yeah, because you're a thou under. You got that part, right? What about those? Those are 316, so they're 1875. But those are five, they were threes, right? So you lost two times two equals four. That'd be off the number. So what number are you at now? We're supposed to be at three then. No? No. All right. Okay. Clearly, I don't know what I'm talking about. You, got, you lost it. Yep. I think, good thing you don't have to listen to you. Exactly. So I'm trying to stay as quiet as possible. There's zero. That's one thou clearance. If everything was standard, the bearings are undersized. So you take off four. So it should be at six. It should be four under. We are at what? One under, right? Ooh, that was round. That's typical us now, see? So. Wow. So we got an extra three tenths clearance in there. That's why the rods felt kind of loose, which I liked. But that gives you uh, 13 tenths clearance, which is one more than 12 for the real hot rod guys in the room. Mm. I run a little bit more than that. My clearance would not be here, it'd be down here. Oh shit. I run two and a half to three thou clearance on my race bike. Because if you're gonna run sustained 7,500 RPM and above numbers, you better have some of these clearances in there. Otherwise the rollers, the rollers do not roll, they slide. Sliding is not good. You want them to roll. Run the roll, yeah. Yeah. So that is how much I'll run? Uh, it's one, two, three, three, three to four. Oh, plus that, that's five. Five, yeah. yeah, four. That's four right there. Four, because it was like the egg. Let me turn over this side. It's one tenth difference already. And the same droop. So you got about four. So you're in about four to five tenths that around, which is half a thou. I think it's a boat anchor. <laughs> They're trying to make this the same weight as this. I don't know why. Stupid. Whatever. They got a theory. Okay, how's this one? Oh, this one's better. Yeah, that one's bad. Yeah. Three tenths. Two and a half tenths. Ooh. Oof. Make a grease on that? No, that's where it is. That's two tenths up. <laughs> two tenths down. <laughs> Four tenths. This side here is like one tenth, and when I drop to two tenths, three. So yeah. So the one side's not very good at all. The other one's not bad. It's worse. <laughs> oh. We do have some clearance in there, which is good. Okay. So what's the uh, end result of this? They're loose and not very round. Yeah, which is kind of concerning, I guess, but Maybe not really. That's why I took all this shit apart to measure it and fix it. So would you go bigger then? On now being loose and not around means the bike still runs good. If it was tight, you'd have a problem. Then you lose the crank. And they do go the other direction too. Okay. But lately they've been more loose than tight. So, <clears throat> so they're going to air in the direction that actually still works. But when things are out around and loose, they tend to vibrate a little bit more and be slightly different.
But they still work. You know, I gotta take the rod for clearances. For straightness. Oh, Scooby's up. What's up, Scooby? You think there's Scooby in there? Easy to look pretty good about that. Pin fit good. That's a used Evo pin. What kind of bike is this? Uh, shovel. Oh. With a used using a used Evo pin. It's a good fit for an for Evo. <laughs> Knucklehead pin. You get rid of old clips. They're real wide though, that's why you use it. Oh, they're a little looser. Racing fit. So all you do is just bump the... Uh, See how it goes up and down? Yeah. That's loose. Evo pin. Oh, that's tight. Doesn't go up and down, but it slides like it's supposed to. No clearance. This one here slides real nice. Look at that, a racing fit. But it also goes up and down, too, if it's loose. But is, is, so is the up and down good, necessarily? No, that means the whole piston's rocking. Oh, shit. So, unless they are using the Evo pins and they're shovel pistons, this is an Evo rod, not a shovel head rod. Nice, huh? I don't know. No. I, don't, I don't know what to think about it. What, you know about what to that? think about that one? Yeah, me either. <laughs> it means they fucked up. Or maybe had a miscommunication in the, what the application was for. Okay, so now, let's see how bent it is. It's really hard to see because it's dark around here. Want me to hold the flashlight on the other end? No, that blinds me. <laughs> but it looks like there's a gap. There's definitely a gap on that one. And a little bit of gap on the top. So bring your camera around together. The rod's not straight. It's close. It's straight. So there's a small gap in there. Is there? Uh, you can't. You can barely see it. Well, I said it was close. This one here's touching down here, and then you got a gap over here. Let me turn it. Let me see if I can zoom into it. Oh yeah, you can see that gap for sure. Mm -hmm. So there you go. It's straight. Straight enough. Straight, straighter. Sneaking over there. Oh, jeez. Okay, so now we gotta bend the rod straight. So we can go a little bit like that. And which was the other way with that? Oh, yeah, up. That's <laughs> sick. You're not attacking that dog over there, are you, Joe? No, it's the same height, huh? Oh, okay. Hey, how's it going? What are you working on now? I'm gonna steal my hubs. I just gotta get a final word on it for me. Final word on your hubs. There's no studs in those hubs. Huh? There's no studs in those hubs. No. Just uh, weird little grooves. Ooh, groovy. We talked about, we talked about it before. I don't remember. Hang on, excuse me. Let me get filled in here. I try to ignore stuff like that. Okay, it looks like we got a little bit of a gap on this one, and this one looks like it's probably good. So what's that mean? We gotta tweak it that way. It means I gotta go some more. Yep. You like to crank it flexes a lot. <laughs> now, the more flex you get, the stronger the rod is. It takes more force to straighten. It's a hell of a vice you got there. Yeah. So, I'm still waiting to be uh, straightened. Scoop it around the other way and see if my machine is accurate or not. Yeah, 
up up here and see. You. I never had this lesson before. You have it? No. Why not? I've never seen you do any low rent stuff except eyeball a crank one time. Eyeball a crank? And I said, what? It was junk, probably, right? Yeah, it was in like 25,000 or something, or 2,000. It was really close to being good. That's a brand new bike, was it? Aftermarket? So I got the gap on the top and the top. And I got the same gap on the side over here. Is that the pan headies too? No, there's no pan head right here. No? Mm, there's probably a little bit of a gap on top. It's hard to see with the darkness behind you. See, if you put a piece of white right here, you can really see good. We don't want to do that. Now, I bend it back and forth a lot because that'll shake it up and make it figure out where it wants to sit. Otherwise, it'll, it'll go back. It's with memory, yeah. Yeah. Too much up and definitely not outside the side yet. These rods are pretty stout that way. The SS rods do get stronger over the years because the material they're using is stronger. They heat treat it better. Probably alloy a little better too. Maybe. They definitely heat treat it better. Yeah. Nothing new in the steel world. Well, there's a lot of new stuff in the steel world, look at new cars. There's so many different grades of steels out there now, it's ridiculous. Yep. The up and down is the worst right now. machine all these parts down here to make them repeatable, more repeatable than they were. What's that whole device called right there? Is it just like a rod vice or what? Call it down here. Or a spanning mandrel is actually what you call it. Spanning mandrel. Yeah, it expands. Nut does it expands it up, see. So it locks it. Oh geez, who did that? Too far up. <laughs> Finally moved. <laughs> the gaps are pretty small if you notice. We're not really going yeah. large amounts here. But it doesn't matter. I like being pretty close. There, how's that one take? Is that close enough? Question is, how does it look to you? It's about five, within five thou, maybe three thou right now. Mm -hmm. Sounds pretty good. I'll flip it over. <laughs> it's all off. Have you, have you done that before? And that's why I remachined all these parts. I actually made a new bushing here, so it was tight to the thread and not flopping around like, yeah. the, like the original tools were. I remade the tools to be more accurate. That's weird. I did put a little more gap on the top. Hmm. Oh, now you show up for your bike. The amount of stuff I had to go through to get that wheel. <laughs> and the amount of tripping that was going over your bike here on the ground. Yeah, I bet you guys are tripping over it the whole yeah, time. Yeah, we were. We have been. Okay, so the gap came back on the top, which I don't want to see. My tools not being accurate today, or well, my eyeballs are, or my eyeballs are not accurate. Which one is it? Combination of both. A little bit of both. A little bit of both. So I guess there's a little bit of an air gap on the bottom. Oh, there you go. You turn the light a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah, there's a gap on the bottom, but not as much.
pretty close in the bottom, but it probably needs more. Go this direction and check it. See, this one puts the gap on this side instead of the tube on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So, because it hits on the top, it's really hard to see down here. When it's like this, I can see it better. I get more light reflection, I guess, over there. Oh, I'm, I'm looking at the shelf unit over there instead of the size of the solvent right here. So. Better contrast. <laughs> It's definitely a little bit But I got the twist out finally. You have to redo this every time because it changes. When you bend it, yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of leverage here. So it affects how the arbor works. Okay, that looks pretty close there. Playing, 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 all of a sudden, oh, it moved. Just like true and flywheels. Okay, that's still pretty damn close. This way. Make sure it's close this way. Yeah. Okay, gap comes back on the top. Much. It's in there. When you get the light just right, you can see it. What do you think? It's like too foul? You have to put feeler gauge in there to see. But if I go like this, will that do it? <laughs> Very temperamental. It's just it's so close. You, know, you literally have to get it just in the right spot to see the light. Except real close. <coughs> But the twist is out of it. I didn't like the twist. Side to side is not as critical as twist. Now see this one's a little tighter. So oh yeah, you can see it when you're pushing it. But it's still loose because that's an Evo. It's one thou bigger than the other one. So that's not good. One here, you can see just a Tiny. something in there. Yeah, you can see two or three thou. You get the light contrast yeah. in the background just right. And then you get just a tick on the very, very top. Very close. See, do a couple of those. Make you feel better. This one didn't have to twist that though, so that's good. Now we're using a wrist pin that has a lot of that's not very loose. Now if you had this in there, it would rot you'd you'd have twenty thou gap because it would be clunked uh you go back and forth. With the piston bucket now just mean a lot of Because you look at the leverage difference, the the angles between the distance from here to here, see that would give you you multiply one thou here and you go out, you know, two inches, inch and a half. You multiply it out, it doubles it. It'll, yeah, it'll get yeah. out. Move so it more. increases quite a bit. Very little here makes a big difference up here. So when you get start getting loose wrist bends, it gives you... you, would, you, you would can you score by, the inside wall? By pushing it? on the back of this or in the front of this, you can change your angles. You know, the distances, the errors and stuff. The side to side will still be the same. It's just the up and down this way would change it. What kind of problems would that cause? Loose Internally. Yeah, yeah. Loose wrist pin motion just means you can rip the piss out of it at a really high RPM and it won't stick on you. But it's not good to have that much clearance usually on your wrist pin, you don't want it. So you can feel it, you hear it, touch your finger against it. 
Oh, yeah. Just touch your finger, don't push on it. Feel it? Yeah. So you got quite a bit in there. So we need to go check your your pistons and see what they feel like. So where are your pistons? We uh, they should be in the cylinder, cylinder box? boxes, which we well, put let's back. Let's go grab your pistons and let's see what they look like. Okay. Yeah.